So let's look a little bit further at the sociological perspectives and how they think about the hidden curriculum. Two that come right to mind are the functionalists. And, you know, if you remember, they see schools as an important institution which socializes young people into certain uh, values, especially into those values that will take them or uh, take them into the job market. So for the functionalists, they see the hidden curriculum as, is a latent function, meaning that it is hidden but is important. And part of what it teaches them is this idea of meritocracy. That basically, you, you, if you work hard in education, you will get what you deserve. And that relates also to the conflict theorists. Who see uh, schools rather than just providing necessarily equal opportunity and access, like we'd like to believe, creating uh, some that have more power, privilege, and status, better access to better education versus others. And that the hidden curriculum, uh, though, the, sets up this kind of divide and this, uh, with this idea of meritocracy, so those that really kind of um, internalize the school's norms, values, and procedures, just what we were talking about before, better have a better chance of performing this meritocracy and getting uh, potentially a better education or at least better access to it. So so the conflict theory, theorist see hidden curriculum kind of producing that divide again that we often see in access to education. Um, a, another way to think about it is with the symbolic interactionists and they look more at the kind of culture of the school and how different groups are there. So if you think about cliques, uh, cliques, uh, how they kind of perform the different norms or values. It could be the dress code, it could be the, the lingo or the slang the students use, it could be the relationship between teachers and students. So it isn't just like, it because it's taken for granted and cultural behavior, uh, the students actively reproduce um, aspects of the school's culture and that also creates different kinds of divisions and meanings and how students choose to um, kind of internalize the culture, perform the culture, what cliques they belong to, um, can all have an impact on how well they do in school. And uh, two other ones that uh, we should talk about as well, that relatedly with this culture thing, cliques, they're also feminists, would look at the work of gender and um, whether the, there's gender dimensions to the hidden curriculum in terms of the norms and values. They may look at the gendered impact of uh, educational achievements. So for example, divides between girls and boys and how well they do. And lastly would be the postmodernists. I'm going to put it up here. And for them, the individual's subjectivity is paramount. So they would say, well, the individual can create or craft her or his or their own experience of education, and they may perform some of these norms and values and procedures or what have you, but they're kind of creating their own pathway in the school. So there, in a nutshell, if you will, is what the hidden curriculum is about. We talked about uh, the formal learning, but real, but then and focused on the hidden learning um, that's sort of hidden, and we looked at norms, values, and procedures, and we connected that to all the five sociological perspectives. So thanks very much for listening.